Welcome back to Arsenal Pass and our draft guide series on Watkins Wraith in anticipation of the farewell events happening at the end of January. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about Bravo, our guardian from Aria, the, the, the native of Aria, a hero that's all about, you know, big crushing attacks, inflicting on-hit effects that, you know, cripple the opponent, causing negative effects, about that Anathos hammer that he wields, and strong defense. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about some of the strengths and weaknesses of Bravo as a hero in Welcome to Wraith Draft, the key archetypes that you should be looking at uh, to draft to find success in the Welcome to Wraith Draft format, and the key cards that you need to be looking out for to build these archetypes, and how you should probably be prioritizing these in each of your drafts. All right, then let's get into it and talk about some of the strengths of Bravo. What is Bravo good at in this Welcome to Wraith limited format, and in particular Welcome to Wraith Draft, which of course is what we are looking at? Well, first of all, big attacks. Bravo has access to some really efficient large attacks in the Guardian class. Things like Debilitate, 4 for 5, Disable, you know, 5 for 9. These really strong attacks as well as just 3 for 7s with tag on effects, with crush effects. You can also easily pay for cards like Raging Onslaught, a fantastic card in Bravo. So just really efficient attacks that are going to allow you to keep density of threats late game because you know coming in for 7 to 9 damage off of one card, a lot of other classes have to expend 2, maybe even 3 cards to be able to present the same amount of damage, but not Bravo. So into the late game, you're going to be a lot less susceptible to fatigue or running out of red line cards that are actually threat density in your deck, which is great. It means that we can play more blue resource cards, which can allow us to play these cards, pay for them, and also come in with our weapon, the Anathos. Crush, Bravo has access to that keyword, Crush, in Guardian and Welcome to Wraith, and it's really, really important because what it's doing is it's presenting an on-hit effect alongside that really efficient damage that we just talked about on those attacks. Take a card like Cartilage Crush, one of my favorites, 3 for 7 at red, that's presenting 7 damage, of course, but also an on-hit effect of causing the first action your opponent plays next turn to cost one extra resource. Real big upside there, and so that's what we're looking for with our attacks around Bravo and how we're looking to, you know, structure some of these archetypes, and we're going to get into archetypes soon, but already laying the foundations of some of the powerful things that Bravo can do in this format. Of course, we do need resources in Bravo, and we're looking to play quite a few because of the expensive nature of the cards in Bravo, and resource cards in Bravo tend to be very strong. So while some other classes, you know, they have to play zero cost attacks that come in for one in order to turn on their Kodachis, Katsu, we're looking at you, we get to play three cost, you know, five power attacks for crush effect, you know, with crush effects on them, which is just really massive. So a lot of the resource cards that we're actually putting into Bravo also have the ability to be played and work well when played, which is fantastic, a real strength for Bravo there. Auras, we also have the you know ability to access auras in Bravo, and a lot of these are actually really strong. Uh, Stonewall Confidence, one of my personal favorites, just a really effective defensive card. We've got Blessing of Deliverance. We have Emerging Power, which is possibly the strongest of them, and one of the key cards we're actually going to look at, and a couple of the archetypes that you can play with Bravo and Welcome to Wraith Draft. So access to these cards that help you use those resources that you might have left over, because of course we're only coming in for one attack usually on our turns, and then can have power or an effect uh, at a subsequent turn, even your opponent's turn. And of course, Bravo defensive wise, very, very strong because you do have a lot of these three defense cards. In fact, all the Guardian cards defend for three, plus you have access to some generics uh, that you can prioritize high in draft as well. And because of the high resource count, you can effectively and efficiently pay for cards like a movable, often, if not all the time, you know, a lot of the time being able to just pitch a single blue card and pay for a movable, which a lot of other classes can't do because they're wanting to play less resource, uh, blue line resource cards in the deck. We also have access to Staunch Response, the rare defense reaction in Bravo and Guardian and Welcome to Wraith. So a really strong defensive deck and really the most uh, effective defensive deck in Welcome to Wraith. Of course, it's not all positives for Bravo and Bravo does have some weaknesses in the Welcome to Wraith draft format. Bravo really struggles to go wide. It's a go tall deck in nature. You know, you don't have access to much go again. Within Guardian itself, you actually have no access to go again outside of the auras that are going to allow you to play multiple cards, but your attack actions are going to be pretty singular focused unless you can, you know, play cards like Scar for a Scar, or you've got a way to give things go again, maybe with a zero cost attack and Snapdragon Scalers. Uh, if you find a way to put Flock of the Featherwalker into the deck, good luck. I don't think that's <laughs> super, super likely. But yeah, so we're looking at really go tall attacks, and that makes you susceptible to cards like Unmovable uh, or to really efficient blocking. And it's, it's also the sort of the next thing that this kind of leads into is that it's really obvious what Bravo is going to be doing turn to turn because your cards or the cards you're playing are so, you know, they're pretty, pretty linear. You're often just going to be sinking into one attack every single turn, whether it be weapon 
or that be an attack action, uh, maybe a three cost, four cost, five cost, etc. Crush requires you to deal four damage. So while some other on hit effects in this format require just one damage to go through, Dawnblade, getting a counter on, uh, some cards like Snatch, uh, we have cards in you know Katsu that have on hit effects, you know, like Wami Gust Wave, or just turning on Katsu's ability only requires one damage. Crushing the hand is going to require you to deal four damage, and that's a lot harder to do while others only need to deal one damage. So something to really keep in mind about how you build around decks. And a bit of a word of warning is just be careful about how often you dominate to try and push these crush effects. Often it's, you know, it's not as efficient and actually as a bigger payoff as you might think. And then resource heavy. A Bravo deck, because of the nature of the cost of the cards you're playing, it means it's very resource heavy. And this can sometimes force you to put in cards that you don't really want to play. You know, blue cards, uh, like Scour the Battlescape, that aren't going to be very good in your deck that you just need for the blue resource, defend two, you know, that don't cost three, so don't turn on Anathos, really awkward. And also you can draw hands with all blues and not have these attacks. Uh, and if your opponent sort of does nothing on their turn, kind of left a bit awkward with these, you know, four blue card hands. So that is certainly a downside and a bit of a weakness for Bravo in this Welcome to Wraith draft format. All right, next up, I want to talk about archetypes with Bravo, the Guardian and Welcome to Wraith. And draft archetypes are probably one of my favorite things about Flesh and Blood working out exactly you know, what your win conditions look like, how a deck should be built, and the key cards that need to go into that to execute that plan or strategy. And the cool thing with archetypes in Flesh and Blood, especially in Welcome to Wraith, is that you can reliably do it quite often uh, once you practice these or you know the key cards you're looking for or how you want to build these decks because you have some cards that are interchangeable, you identify a few really key cards that you need in these decks, and then you go and draft them and you build the deck. And often they'll play out pretty similar or at least in, in very similar veins if the game's won't always go the same, but your plan will be pretty similar. So the first one I want to talk about is the defensive Anathos builds. And what these really are is a Guardian basically control deck. You're being very defensive in nature. You're blocking out a lot of your opponent's damage. Uh, you are even fatiguing the opponent to win, potentially, or you're just coming in and leaking damage with Hammer. So a really common line of play here is, okay, I defend with three cards from my hand, come back in with my Hammer pitching one card. Your opponent's probably expending four cards, three to four cards, to do something uh, similar because they're probably coming with like two attacks maybe. Uh, and then, you know, on their turn, defending with one card on your Anathos. The other cool thing you can do as well is that you can, of course, you know, sink resources into your hero ability. So you can pitch a blue card, pay for your hero ability, pitch another blue card, and then come with Anathos for six, as long as those cards have uh, three cost or higher, which is really fantastic when you're sort of trading damage. It means that you can always pump extra resources into that Anathos. You can, not just one card, you can put two cards into it if you're left over with cards, which is, yeah, it's a really strong ability. You can also set up end games. So you can sort of chip through mid game with your hammer, defend out a lot of damage, get your opponent to like a reasonable life total, and then set up an end game where you've just got these big crush effects that you can actually dominate as long as you keep your life high enough to sort of take damage to be able to do it, which is one thing I really like about these kind of defensive Anathos builds. In terms of some of the key cards that you're looking for, uh, you're really looking for the defense reaction. So Staunch Response, Unmovable, Sink Belows, these cards that defend above rate are really important to you because that's what you need to do to, to ensure that you are uh, expending less cards than your opponent. So something like an Unmovable Yellow, we play it, it costs us three, we defend for six, our opponent has probably put two cards into that effect. Let's say they played like Nimbleism into a Head Jab or something to come in for six. Well, we expended just one card to defend for six. So that's what we're trying to do with these Nimbleisms and Staunch Responses. Other cards that are important to us are Stonewall Confidence because it does a very similar thing. It makes our three cost or, or higher uh, cards defend for more. So we can defend taller, really good against Brute, uh, really good against the, the Guardian Mirrors, not as good against Katsu, and that is something to be aware of because of how wide they go. Blessing of Deliverance allows us to gain back life, allows us to sink those resources in um, and, and do something with those extra resources on an Anathos turn and still come in for six probably. And then you're just looking for three uh, cost, three defense blue cards, cards that can trigger Anathos's attack, cards that defend for three, and, and cards that are blue. Just the perfect combination of what you're looking for. Outside of that, Iron Rot Equipment. These are fantastic for uh, sort of supplementing this defensive plan and Drone of Brutality. This is going to help you ensure that you never sort of fatigue before your opponent on this defensive plan. All right, next archetype that's up with Bravo, and the one that I've probably drafted the most, I think, when I've played Bravo in Welcome to Wraith Draft is a Crush Bravo. This is a very traditional sort of Bravo builder, I think, uh, is how I would describe it. 
It's a deck that's built around land and crush effects, it's in the name, hence, <laughs> and trading cards efficiently on sort of off turns. So what that means is that I'm trying to get to a turn, maybe one in four turns or probably two or three times during a game that revolve around sort of solid crush effects and a pump effect. So a classic example of this is I come in with a cartilage crush red, pitch my blue, and I play something like a pummel on top of it. Or I play an emerging power the turn before, arsenal the cartilage crush, and on my turn, just one card in hand, just a blue card in hand, I pitch it, cartilage crush comes in for 10. So these are the sort of things that you're looking to do with this deck. Often just two, three card hands in order to do this. Sometimes four with cards like pummel or slogism, even another great one to pair with it. And then on my off turns, I'm pretty happy just to go, okay, defend with two cards for six, come in with a naked, uh, naked cartilage crush or raging onslaught or crush confidence, uh, whatever it might be. And this sort of idea of three for seven is really efficient, means that we're trading or netting about 13 damage on those turns, which is, is a great trade. Or we can just come in with weapon, right? Uh, of course, that's the strength of Anathos. So that's what Crush Bravo kind of looks like. And yeah, you're really trying to think about what cards to pair together. So I want to get my Crush effects over because that's going to hamper my opponent. Uh, debilitate's a great one with Pummel of two blues, four card hand that can come in for, you know, 12 damage if they're both red. Take a card out of their hand, make their first attack have two less power, and you're probably, to be honest, that's a, that's a huge tempo swing. You're probably taking your opponent's whole turn or most of their turn away. And even if they can sort of see it coming, they, you know, the pummel's telegraphed, it's going to be really difficult for them to uh, defend it out efficiently. They probably have to throw their whole hand, tuck that pummel in Arsenal, and you're away laughing unless they have a defense reaction. So I really like this build. It's really efficient. It kind of does the sort of game plan really consistently. You can always just come in with attacks, as I say. Find a big turn if you needed. And you know what? End of the day, you can also just play defensively if you need to. So this is a very mid-range sort of style. It's between that defensive build and a build that I'm about to talk about, another archetype, which is harder to get together, I think, but is really, really fun. All right, last archetype for Bravo and one that is exceptionally fun if you can pull it together. I've only played this a few times myself. I think it's a bit harder to draft and you have to identify it pretty early, I think. You're looking for really key cards early on to get into this archetype, but it's an OTK Bravo a one turn kill bravo or at least a semi one turn kill uh, you can actually deal 18 damage on one turn pretty easily with bravo if you have the right cards in your deck and you can even deal more with the right setup so what this looks like is you're going to have a three cost f for seven attack like we've talked about all through this bravo video cartilage crush or crush confidence you probably what you're going to do is you're probably going to play an emerging power on the on a turn arsenal that three cost attack and then you're going to draw something like a slogism or a pummel, uh, and then you're gonna come in with the seven cost attack, so the seven power attack, the, let's say it's a slogism, so you're paying three for that, so two resource cards so far, that's now up to 13 damage, plus your emerging powers pop for the turn, that's 16 damage, and one of the most important cards that you're gonna use before you even start this chain is Goliath Gauntlet. You really want this card in this deck in order to make this work. But that's 18 damage right there, and that's gonna be very, very difficult for your opponent to stop, even if all the cards in their hand defend for, for three, you're pushing six damage over the top, getting the crush effect at a minimum, uh, although it probably isn't gonna matter if they're defending with their whole hand. But if you have hardened cross strat available to you, another really important card in this archetype, you're gonna be giving uh, your attack dominate anyway, because you're gonna have access to eight resources across the three effects that you need to pay for. Dominate's gonna cost you two, the attack's gonna cost you three, Slogism's gonna cost you three, eight resources, four cards in total, uh, plus your emerging power that's popped, I mean, for 18 dominate damage, it's probably going to win you the game. So how to build this deck, how to play it. You're looking for quite a heavy resource count in this deck. You're probably looking for 18 plus blues, to be honest, in this deck, for so 18 to 20 blues. That's going to be really important because on the turn that you go off, you're going to need to have those two blue cards plus the hard and cross strap. You don't always need the hard and cross strap, but that dominate is going to make a big impact if you're trying to kill them from, say, 12 life or something. So you are on the hunt for that hard and cross strap. You're going to uh, you know, play reasonably defensively. You're going to try and find that emerging power, find that uh, seven for three attack. You can even pitch this for the end game. So you can be really defensive, pitch your slogism, pitch your blues, pitch, pitch your attack action, find the emerging power, stick it in arsenal, wait till you get back through to your stack, play that emerging power, arsenal that seven attack, set up that big turn. Pummel can replace uh, slogism. It's two less damage, but of course, if you're dominating it, it's going to have that on-hit effect as well, the discard. That's really huge. It's probably going to swing enough tempo that either you take the game or you're in a, a massive life lead. So that's kind of what the OTK deck looks like. As I say, key cards, hardened cross trap, Goliath Gauntlet, Slogism Red, 
Uh, the blue slogism also really, really good as well. Does a similar thing. It's just two less damage. Emerging power, you're going to need that. Uh, Pummel red can do a similar job to the slogism. The Helm of Eisen's Peak can actually replace what the Hardened Cross Trap is doing. So on your setup turn, you can effectively get another card in hand, which will give you more resources to do that dominate plus the big turn. So yeah, the OTK deck, it's really fun. It's harder to get together. But if you manage to do it in this Welcome to Wraith farewell events, then let us know because I'm excited to hear about it. All right, a couple more things I want to talk about with Bravo and Welcome to Wraith Draft for this guide. First is some key considerations when drafting or playing Bravo. So one of those is that you're going to want to be looking for minimum sort of 13, 14, but ideally 15 plus blue resource cards in your deck in any of these archetypes. As we just talked about with the one turn kill deck, you're looking at like, you know, 20-ish blues ideally. Uh, with the defensive deck, I'm looking around similar, like 17, 18 blues. With that mid-range crush deck we talked about, I'm happy to have a bit less blues because I'm also just going to be having turns where I trade, uh, you know, like pay a seven uh, power attack for three. Those blues are going to cycle back through and I'll have a lot of blues late game to, you know, set up big end game turns. So I'm okay with a bit less blues there. You also want those blues and those blue resources to be quality cards. So prioritizing blue cards quite highly with Bravo is actually really important. So cards like Blue Disable are fantastic. Uh, blue Raging Onslaught, taking those early because they actually keep you open. But if you go into Bravo, that card is going to be massive for you. Defense three, cost three is a blue card. Like just fantastic. As well as blue cards that do something late game. So if you draw a lot of blues, you know, you still have the effect of these blues being able to do something. Blue Slogism is one of the best for that because you draw a heavy blue hand and that blue Slogism still gets to be played alongside an attack action. You could have three blues in hand plus a red attack action that costs three. You get to come in for 11 because of the uh, the blue slogism. Equipment are really important. And I don't know if they're most important in Bravo, but across these archetypes, there's a few pieces of equipment that are really important. So we talked about with the one turn kill, hard and cross trap or Helm of Eisen's Peak, plus Goliath Gauntlet, that, that combination really important. Goliath Gauntlet is just fantastic across all of the archetypes of Bravo and a real high priority pick for me uh, when I'm thinking about drafting Bravo. You know, I could get into pack two. I know I'm in Bravo. Goliath Gauntlet's in my pack, and there's another really strong Guardian card, like a red attack. I'm probably going to take the Goliath Gauntlet, to be honest. It's a really high uh, priority pick. Other than that, you've got the Helm that we talked about, Hard and Cross Strap, and Iron Rot is really good in that defensive deck, plus just, in general, just strong. Uh, although, I would, that would start to slip down my pick order, depending on what archetype I'm drafting. Last but not least, what are the most important cards to be drafting when you want to play Bravo in Welcome to Wraith Draft? Well, it is somewhat going to depend on the archetype that you go into. But early on, when you are sort of staying open, you know, you're just drafting good Guardian cards and then deciding which archetype you might go into. There's a few things that are really important. I talked about some of those. Blues, you know, really efficient and just powerful blue cards. Like Disable. Um, if you get Cranial Crush, fantastic. You've got Debilitate. That's a great blue. Slogism we already talked about. Uh, Unmovable is a fantastic blue card. So there's some of those blue cards. Uh, I would say Stonewall Confidence Blue is another fantastic card. So those are some of the really strong blues that I'm looking at that would just go into any of these uh, archetypes that we've just talked about. But if we look a bit more specifically, so I'm starting to think about which cards are going to be high priority picks because they go into multiple of these archetypes or they're just the power cards I need in order to win games with these decks. Emerging Power Red is one of those. Uh, Cartilage Crush Red would be another of those. Slogism Red. Crippling Crush, if you can open it, I mean, take that card. It's a powerhouse, and that's probably going to put you into somewhat of a setup build anyway, but that card is, is so, so, so strong. And then just defense reactions, uh, really good blue cards, and good equipment. Those are kind of the priority pick orders outside of those sort of specific cards that I talked about. Red Pummel, that's another great card. Right, that's going to wrap up our Guardian deep dive for this Welcome to Wraith draft guide series. Before I go, I do want to reiterate a few key things about drafting Bravo in this format. Just as a little reminder, blue cards, resource cards, the most important thing, if I had to give you one thing, in Welcome to Wraith Draft when you're drafting Bravo, they're going to be at least 50% of your deck, if not, you know, 60, 70%, depending on which archetype you're drafting. So drafting good, strong blue cards is a real consideration like we talked about. Next would be power turns. Think about how you're going to end the game and what these power turns look like, be it with like crush effects in these mid-range crush decks, a big OTK turn, or a defensive deck that needs an in-game turn to close it out. Other than that, if you are looking for the other three hero uh, or class deep dives for this draft guide series, these will be going up before the Welcome to Wraith farewell events are live at the end of January, so look out for those. Other than that, if you are looking for a bit of a cheat sheet, a bit of an idea of how to sort of 
you know, rank these cards or have pick orders for be it staying open in generics or the actual specific heroes, then up on our Patreon, we do have a draft guide available, a bit of a cheat sheet, as I say, and that's available to all tiers of the Arsenal Pass Patreon. But other than that, it's going to be a goodbye for now, and we'll see you in the next class video. Thank <laughs> you.